Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family, and we are so delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. You know that we would love to hear from you, so send us your email with your question or your comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. Well, today we're very excited to have with us Dr. John Aquaviva. He is a professor of exercise science, and he hosts a faith-focused sports radio program. He has authored a fantastic book on how people can help improve their body image through a Catholic understanding of the human person. Did you ever think that was possible? The great book is Improving Your Body Image, through Catholic teaching. And this great book is available at EWTNRC.com. And we're all in great debt to St. Pope John Paul for theology of the body in ways that he has formed us into being the best version of ourselves, not just in appearance, but also in health, emotional health, physical yeah. health, spiritual health, because that is the whole person. And that's the person that God wants us to be, hitting on all those cylinders. Well, I think his book is absolutely critical to what we find in culture, in our society, our young people, uh, the culture, media, um, on our smartphones. And uh, these people don't play fair. You know, mm -hmm. we get accused of proselytizing and putting forth our message. These people come right at our young people, our youth. We buy into it at a very early age. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the dolls, kind of dolls that we look at or whatever. So, this is what I'm supposed to be. This is the body image that I'm supposed to have. Instead of hearing the Lord mm -hmm. uh, say that you are fearfully and wonderfully made even as you, you are. Mm -hmm. um, there may be disabilities and things that require surgery and you know, we want to enhance our health and well-being. But overall, this is a battle for the human person and distortions and illusions and delusions that were being sent. Mm -hmm. And we just need to hear the word of the Lord you know, coming to us. And John's gonna open that up for us. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are sacred and we need to be at home in our own skin. Mm. So plenty more to come. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Good job. Welcome back. Well, we're excited to have with us Dr. John Aquaviva. He is a professor of exercise science, and he hosts a faith-focused sports radio program. He also has authored a fantastic book on how people can improve their body image through a Catholic understanding of the human person. The title of this book is Improving Your Body Image Through Catholic Teaching. It's, you can always get this book at EWTNRC.com. Well, John, we are excited to have you on our show. And first, we want you to tell our family a little bit about yourself. Sure. And then tell our family why you wrote this book about body image and how important it is in our culture. Sure. A little bit about me. Uh, I was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan, one of seven kids, Catholic upbringing, uh, Catholic school through 12th grade. And then eventually in college years, I moved to the mid-Atlantic area and I've been there ever since. And eventually I got a PhD at Florida State University and I've been teaching exercise science for more than 20 years at the college level and I'm currently at Wingate University. I live in the Charlotte area with my wife Alicia and five children. Excellent. Yes. And what are the ages of your kids from top to bottom? 14 years old to three. Wow, so you are in it. I, we're, we're, <laughs> we're purely in it right now, yeah, but it's fantastic. It's exactly what Alicia and I asked for, and we are blessed, for oh, sure. Perfect. So tell our family why you wrote this book about body image, and why is it so important today in our culture? And what was your journey into this area? I mean, you're doing a lot with physical education, health issues, right. and so on. I mean, how did you wind up there? What led you down that path? Well, I, I, I uh, am an exercise physiologist, I'm an exercise scientist, and uh, being faithful, 
uh, I, I was introduced to John Paul II's Theology of the Body, and I was talking about it one day with my wife, Alicia, and she mentioned, you should write a book on that because this is a great way to combine your two loves. Your, your love of exercise science, which involves how does the human body change as a result of taking care of itself through exercise, good nutrition, and so forth, and it combines it with our faith. Mm -hmm. And I started to have conversations with my students who they would bring it up. And being an advisor, often they would trust me, they would start sharing their story, and sometimes it involved the struggles that they had with mm -hmm. body image. And sometimes they were the most beautiful human beings you've seen. They were mm -hmm. 20 years old, they were pretty or handsome, and often they were athletes, some were not athletes, but they would share with me. And often they would share with me with the hope that I would have an answer. Mm -hmm. And often I would hear people in magazines, for instance, on commercials, on TV shows, talk about body image and how to heal it, but nobody ever addressed it from the vantage point of God. Like, mm -hmm. what does faith have to do with this? And that's why I wrote the book. The reason it's such a big deal is because 70% of all women have some type of body dysmorphia, body disorder. And when I say body image uh, issues or dysmorphia, it can mean anything from the head to your feet and somewhere in between. And most people have an issue with it. 70% of women struggle with it and about 33%, about one third of all boys and men struggle with it. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that number for men uh, has grown exponentially over the years just because commercials and uh, social media and so forth has kind of geared it toward playing on those vulnerabilities. Right. So what what is going on? Okay, so we have a body, we see ourselves, we look at ourselves. What is going on? Uh, what is trying to give us a formation that could be unhealthy? When does that begin? How is that happening? What's going on? What is so disappointing? I mean, trying to be perfect is really difficult, and then right. what is perfect? That's right. So how does this work, and what's the pain of it? The pain is, is incredibly high for some people. Mm. For some people, it's an obsession, and it's paralyzing to some people, right? Where that's all they can think about. Uh, everything turns inward. It's all about them, how they look, how they are perceived by other people, which is their body image, like how they view themselves. And uh, there's a lot of outside sources as well. The one thing that we know is that's incredibly complex. There are numerous reasons on why nobody can quite pin which is the most, which has the most responsibility. But in today's age of the internet and social media in particular, we have this in the palm of our hands, literally, and young people especially, but people of all ages mm. constantly go to social media sites, mm. TikTok and Facebook, and the list goes on, right? It, we're all right. familiar with those. And, and individuals post pictures and videos, and some of those are doctored via uh, instruments known as uh, Photoshop or similar instruments that we have on our phone now. Mm -hmm. And the irony is that so many young people are trying to look like somebody that doesn't even exist. Mm -hmm. In other words, that person right. that they're looking at in that magazine, that person that they're looking at on that social media site has been doctored to the point that they don't even look like that. Mm -hmm. The famous model, uh, Cindy Crawford, one time said famously, and I quote this in my book, I don't even look like Cindy Crawford. Right. right. And, and part of it is people have constantly come up to people as pretty as her and said, well, how do you do this? And mm -hmm. she said, remember, when you ask that question, you are thinking of the pictures that you see in magazines, which have been doctored. Right. Yeah. And that plays on people's vulnerabilities. Yeah. I don't look like that, I can never look like that. I'm not as pretty as her, I'm not as handsome as him, I'm not as tall as she is, I don't have as nice hair as they do, and the list goes on. Mm -hmm. And for, thankfully for most people, it's a distraction. But it is a distraction to a faith-filled life because everything turns inward, how can I be better rather than, rather than having a, an attitude and a demeanor of servitude, like how can I serve those in my family? How can mm -hmm. I serve my spouse? How can I serve my children? How can I serve my friends? And if you are turning things inward, the life and thoughts of servitude um, get deflected, right? right? right. And then and we were paralyzed by that. So do you think that really <clears throat> that formation of the character of that person really happens, should be happening at home? Because, yeah. right, because our parents are telling us who we are and how we are and, yeah. and our own 
personal dignity? And, and what if there is a physical deformity? What if there is an ailment, a disfigurement? Okay. It doesn't deny the dignity, value, and worth as that human being. And so that formation has to come from our parents. Of course. If it's not, then we are looking to the world to tell me who I am. That's right. and, and, and that is a manufactured image, That's right. right? I mean, that, that is a false an image. And so that really would then only feed that interior depression, being disconnected from God, de being disconnected from our formation in our family and our right. value and worth, John, right? You know, when you described body image and trying to get it, it seemed to me, I'm not where you are in terms of knowledge in this, but you were giving kind of old school examples to me because you were keeping them within the genders. So I can understand growing up, I looked at particular guys, this and that, and I said, right. I want to be like that. Girls look at particular Barbie doll or whatever yep. it is, and they got all this stuff. So it was, but it seems to me this whole thing of, of identity too, and looking at that, now, now I mean, we're seeing on TV really being pushed, I don't know if it's a man or a woman. Yeah. Okay, so it's androgynous, it's what, and we really don't know. Or there's all sorts of things being done to the body. Yeah. Uh, Tattooing's a sensitive subject. I, I get a tattoo, but then it's all over the face. It's all over, and he said, like, yeah. what? And they're selling this, it seems to me. Yeah. It's, it's like, is that a part of this too? It is. You could say, I think that's beautiful. I, I feel so bad about myself. I'm going to go this way. I'm that. That's right. I think to a degree it is. In okay. fact, I think a lot of people would argue things like tattooing and an excessive piercing, for instance, or drastic changes from surgeons on a change mm -hmm. on how you look is a part of this because there's a lack of gratitude in the human body as it is. And people are, it's not good enough, so therefore I need another tattoo. Therefore, I need another piercing. Okay. I, there was this one gal that had numerous tattoos and she said publicly, I still am looking for that perfect tattoo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so okay. that's a good example of, they're gonna keep searching until, as St. Augustine said, they're, they're searching lies with God, okay. right? And then once they do that, then they're on that avenue of healing. Yeah. Right. It seems, it's psychological, it seems deeply spiritual to me, yes. and there's such an attack on the human person yeah. to, to distort, to deface, to defile, whether it's abortion or it's these kind of, kind of areas. Uh, I think of this text that says, um, you will be like God. So maybe we're not saying I want to be like God, but saying like I, God to me is this perfect thing that I think is really perfect to me. That's right. And it's it's really demonic at the root of it, and psychological too as That's well. Right. But I think Satan's really on the move, and spirits are on the move yes. with self uh, unacceptance, to put it minimally, if not self hate right. and loathing of That's oneself. Right. And this is really at you know, very, it's deeply spiritual. It is. It's it's you, you guys have hit the nail on the head. It's both a psychological okay. and a spiritual issue. And because of its complexity, it's really difficult unless you interview people one by one on exactly how it's impacting them. And you guys have mentioned a few things in our culture that kind of magnify that. And one of the things that you've mentioned a couple times, which is really fascinating, is there are some body image experts who have theorized that the single biggest problem in this starts before we would ever think it starts and it starts with Barbie dolls or superheroes mm -hmm. because they're proportionally um, uh, they're unattainable that's right it's <laughs> the ridiculous <laughs> right. models of the human body mm -hmm. and and it's thought that that is one of the problems that starts so right. early that most people innocently right. give these dolls to children just to allow them to play and they're like what are you talking about that right. this is a issue but it's thought that that's one of them. And then of course it morphs into different issues, but that's thought to play a role. And then social media and any time people look at themselves mm -hmm. after seeing another image is problematic. It's mm -hmm. called the social comparison theory. Right. And what that means is the longer I look at these images, the longer I see the photos, the videos of somebody else, especially if they are particularly attractive, they're young, their skin is tight, they're in good shape, combination of any of those things. Yeah. When they look at themselves, the longer that they look at those images, when they look at themselves, they just compare themselves to that, and it's a battle that can't be won, that most people don't win. Right. There's a saying, right? Comparison is the death to of peace. peace. <laughs> Comparison is, right. I think that's part of what you're... You guys should have written a book on this. No. This is outstanding. No, but, but, but these it, themes it, are so... It is real because, it, it and that's why girls, true. I think, are 
there's such a higher percentage because girls are always, I mean, I have, I have four sisters. Yeah. And, and I'm comparing myself as a little girl to my sisters. Sure. You know, it's like her hair is thicker. You know, she her legs are thinner. Yeah. You know, and, and you just, and so you have to learn as a child, and this yeah. is the power of words with parents <laughs> right. over their children saying, you are beautiful, your body type is different, right. and it's not right or wrong to who you are. That's and right. we, we too, I mean, we have 17 grandkids, we have 10 granddaughters, yes. seven grandsons, different body types, That's right. and, and it's okay. And you, right. we're not all gonna be one size that fits all, or this, this is the goal, because it robs us of how God made us. And only we can be the best version of ourselves. That's right. We just have to try to make ourselves better, but not aim for perfection. Mm -hmm. And even though people would hear that and say, well, that's a, that's a slippery slope if we aim to be better. But perfection is the game that we will lose every single time. And our, like, for instance, my field, exercise physiology, I teach exercise physiology. That's what the course is called. The entire textbook is about how physical activity and good nutrition heals our body, makes it better, makes it more healthy, helps us perform better and so forth. I'm all for that. As, yeah. a, as a former yeah. physical educator, as a current exercise physiologist, I am for uh, the athlete, the individual working out and making themselves better on the field, making themselves healthier yeah. and so forth. But when we start to think about perfection, mm -hmm. that's when the problem starts and it's a silent soul killer. Mm -hmm. This is clearly the work of the devil. Yeah. The evil one is constantly at us, and in social media, it's one of the reasons why people our age, par you know, parents, grandparents say, I'm glad I'm not growing up yeah. in this culture, right. because they realize it's even more difficult than it was. They ha the social comparison theory is constantly at play, and this is why the parent must, must do their best to limit their child's time on social media, mm -hmm. on all these sites, and going to pictures and videos and, and, and having conversations and hanging out with individuals who dress in an immodest manner, that is the, the biggest silent uh, killer mm -hmm. of them all because mm -hmm. all these other things, we go to it, right? We go yeah. to websites, we go to TV, we go to movies, we do all those things on our own. But the one thing that comes to us is we go to the mall, we go to a football game, we go to some social event, People are dressed immodestly. Mm -hmm. and you go to church. <laughs> church even, <laughs> yes, of course. And then that plays on it as well because mm -hmm. we, there we have no control over mm -hmm. that. However, the biggest killers are the ones that are yeah. out there, especially on social media and TV, mm -hmm. movies, videos, yeah. and, and so forth. John, we're going to go to a break. We're going to hold you over for the final Perfect. segment. And so I hope you're getting a lot out of this, and I'm sure John's going to lead us to some aids and things that can help us to some solutions if we would grasp them. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. Talking with John Aquaviva, improving your body image through Catholic teaching, how theology of the body and other Catholic writings can transform your life. Go to EW10RC.com, EW10RC.com, get the book there. So, John, we are, we're sharing a lot of bad news. <laughs> you know, just, just it's it's true. the state of the culture, yep. our own brokenness, how the enemy can play on us, psychologically, what's going on as we try to meet perfection, as we define that and it's yeah. just it, it's totally elusive and, and leads to despair um, leads to depression I think part of the suicide problem among our young people is this very thing yeah. th that you're you're addressing so you dealt with this as as a teacher and people coming to you and hearing them and you try to listen just be a good listener let them let them relieve themselves of this right. how did you grow to find out hey I think I got my finger on some solutions here to help people be set free and be at home in their own skin. Sure. How did that happen for you? In uh, one thing I didn't mention about me in the opening segment was uh, a stint in between uh, eight years at Roanoke College as a professor and then Wingate University where I am now. I was a seminarian for a couple of years for the Diocese of Richmond. 
And it was during that time in the 2000s was where I first heard about JP2's mm. Theology of the Body. And I thought, this is great, because it's, it's really meant for the married life, right? He, yeah. he said, there's purpose to the body. We were embodied for a reason, and he shaped it for those who are married and for those who are thinking about marriage. Like, the man and women go together like two pieces of a puzzle. But he also talked about just the dignity of the body and the purpose of the body, right? That we were embodied for a true reason. He could have made us spiritual beings, right? The God being omnipotent could have done anything with us, but he gave us a body for a reason. And if God is good and God is, is the truth, then, then he cannot want us to have these obsessive lives. Mm-hmm. He, can't, he doesn't want us to have these lives of misery. And, and, um, and so it was through these writings that, that I thought, I, I want to flush this out and I, I want to talk in practical terms to help the everyday individual, especially mm-hmm. the young adult that is struggling with these issues. So what I did is I, I wrote a chapter on say, okay, these are the problems. This is why the hysteria is what the chapter is called. Like, what are the things within our culture that cause this, which we talked yeah. about in the previous segment, social media and television and so forth. But I thought, this is only worth writing a book if I offer a solution to them. <laughs> and it lies within our Catholic faith. And it lies within a sacramental life. For instance, most people, especially viewers of a show like this, know that the term Eucharist is Greek for giving thanks. Mm. And we should give thanks every day for the fact that we were embodied, that we have an opportunity for salvation. This body was made for servitude. It is made to be in relation with others. And God is asking all kinds of things from us. And the one thing he never asked from us is make that body I gave Mm. you perfect, Mm. right? It's for a body of servitude. It's for a life of giving to others. And if we are thankful for that instrument, then we can turn it around and, and put it to good use in our culture. One of the other things I, that I mentioned in there is because we struggle with this, this is the, one of the reasons it's such a great sacrament, the sacrament of reconciliation. Mm-hmm. It's also known as the sacrament of healing. That's what everybody needs that has a body image problem, mm-hmm. right? If they have body dysmorphia, some type of body disorder, they can go into the confessional and they can address this with our Lord. I have not appreciated this gift that you've given me as much as you're asking me to. And, and of course, the whole act of contrition is, I will try to turn mm-hmm. that attitude around. Mm-hmm. And it's through prayer, it's through a regular uh, attendance at mass, and it's through the receiving of the sacraments that we can yeah. turn that around. John, Excellent. thanks so much for some of the solutions. Thank, Thank God you. we have tomorrow to yes. continue to unpack these. The book again, Improving Your Body Image Through Catholic Teaching, How Theology of the Body and Other Church Writings can transform your life. This is hitting at the very core of us as human beings. So God bless you and all of you loved ones. Keep it on EWTN. You're an important part of this family. You're never alone. You're always at home with Jim and Joy. Bye now. Yay.